Hello and welcome, it's Jennifer McGuire, and I have a guest artist for you today. Today I am sharing the work of Marika. She is an incredibly talented artist from Finland, and she makes the most incredible cards. She did this video for me back in the fall. I'm just getting around to sharing it now, but I'm excited to do so. So what she does is she takes a simple stamped image and changes it with a little bit of coloring and turns it into a miniature masterpiece. She keeps the rest of the card clean and simple so the focus stays on where she put her effort on those stamped images. I find Marika's videos so mesmerizing. I think it's amazing to watch somebody take that simple image and transform it into something incredible. So I wanted her to share with you today one of her best techniques where she takes a solid stamped image and turns it into what you see here. For this card, she used just a few Zig Clean Color brush pens, which you know I love, but you could do the same technique by stamping with a light distress ink and then painting over it with distress ink or any watercolor you like. I think I'm probably her biggest fan, so be sure to stay tuned till the end of this video where I'll link to her YouTube channel so you can see more of her incredible work. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Marika and today I'm taking over Jennifer's blog. I was so honored and excited when Jennifer asked me to guest design since I'm a big fan of her work and her dedication to the crafting community. Today I will make a card with Lazy Scrolls by Altenu and for the sentiment I will use the new stamp set from Altenu called Fresh Freesia. I'm also going to make a frame with these pierced rectangles from my favorite things. For my technique today, I will stamp and color these dreamful peonies with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I just scribble some ink onto my stamp and stamp. For my stamping, I used English Lavender Marker. I also do some masking to get the other flower behind the other. And after I have stamped this flower here, I will start coloring these images. I will walk you through a couple of the petals and then speed up and let you enjoy the coloring. I use two colors, dual blue and English lavender. I add blue marker where I believe the most of the shadows would be and next to the blue I add English lavender, the light purple color. I leave the parts of the petal that would gain the most of the highlights as my base color which was the same as my medium color but it was stamped to the paper so it is lighter. Then I'll take my water brush and start to add water and make the colors to blend and to achieve the watercolored look. Here I do exactly the same way. I start with the blue and then purple and then I blend with water brush. I start from the lightest and work my way to the darkest part of the petals. If you wish to achieve the watercolored look for the entire petal, you need to remember to wet the darkest part as well. I also make the lavender and blue to overlap a little bit to gain that bluish purple color in the middle. For my water brush today, I use a fine tip water brush from Kuretake. I wanted to gain this more soft and loose watercolored look and I have found that Kuretake gives more water than my usual Dervent water brush. You can use whatever brush you have in hand or a traditional brush and water works well too. Now I'll let you enjoy the coloring and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, now we are ready to stamp and color the leaves. I don't want to distract the viewer from the flowers, so I use black suit distress ink to stamp and color my leaves. 
I used the four generation stamping to get the very light image and I add shadows and details to get the look that I want. I cut my floral arrangement off screen and now I'm cutting my flower partly off to be able to tuck the leaf behind the frame. For my sentiment I used the Just a Note sentiment from Fresh Freesia set from Altenu and I will stamp it with black pigment ink onto a vellum. Since pigment ink takes years to dry on vellum I heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. I use liquid glue to adhere the flower to the frame and for the corners I use foam tape to get some dimension. I will put glue under my flowers and the frame and then glue the vellum onto my frame. After that I will glue the frame to my card front with liquid glue and foam tape. For the finishing touch I will add black dots in the center of the flowers and some random dots here and there on the background. I will use black and silver irresistible for that. I hope you liked my tutorial and found it helpful. For more information and the full list of supplies you can find at my blog. Jennifer, this was such a big honor for me to guest design for you. Once again, thank you so much. Bye! Thank you so much, Marika. I think your card is absolutely beautiful. If you are interested in seeing more from Marika, you can click below in my YouTube description to head over to her blog. If you're interested in these supplies, they're linked below in the YouTube description also. Or you can click here up at the top left on my logo. That will take you to my blog where I'll link to everything you need to know. In the middle are two things that you might like. The first image will take you over to Marika's YouTube channel. You can subscribe to see more from her. The second image there on the right shows a video that I did with the same stamp set that Marika used today, but with a simple colored pencil technique. If you like this video, please give Marika a big thumbs up. I think she deserves it, and I hope you'll come back soon.